The American in Japanese small town is dying, which many of us have had this impact us directly. Anime, like other mediums, has tried to tackle the issue. Sakura Quest in particular covers the topic of how to revive decline in Japanese towns and was the inspiration for this video. Of course, many small towns have already at this point become ghost towns or shells of their former selves. However, many small towns and cities have, despite the odds, managed to halt their decline. The reasons for their success may vary widely, but the focus of this video is on the use of culture such as TV, movies, games, and other mediums to promote a renewed image that brings in tourists and new residents. Surprisingly, Japan is, I'd say, a good example of this. Although they are indeed the nation of over-exaggeration population decline, Japan has in several cases used Japanese pop culture to revitalize several of its more rural regions. This year, of course, I'll admit, is an extremely complex one, with many different variations of decline and different methods of revival. Many such stories are often forgotten about, so feel free to comment down below if you know about any struggle in small towns that, or if you just simply like to add to the discussion. One introductory problem. What is a small town or even a small city? Well, if you are from New York, the city of Boston might be a tiny city to you. If you're from New England, it is literally the biggest thing around. Roughly speaking, I'd, I'd say a safe estimate for a small city is or town is somewhere between 20,000 to 150,000. Although everything I'm talking about will apply regardless of a city's or town's size and will depend more on context. So why are small cities in decline? Beyond the obvious reason, such as more people are moving to the big cities. The small Japanese town of Nanto, within the Toyama Prefecture as an example, which Sakura Quest bases its own setting on. And pardon my pronunciation of Japanese, of course, as I'm American, it's our culture to mispronounce names. This small town, while older than your American town by centuries, tells a similar story. Nanto started mainly as a town centered around a Buddhist temple, which allowed it to flourish. However, post-World War II, the town has declined as the temple declined, and today has some 30,000 fewer residents than it did back before the war. In America, you have countless similar tales of towns that were primarily focused on a single industry or company going to into decline after their single industry left. Both of these examples show, I think, the most common reason a small town keeps all its eggs in one basket per se and loses everything with nothing to fall back on. Another major concern is the fact that the elderly population is much more likely to reside in smaller communities while younger generations are more likely to be in urbanized areas. Older populations, with no offense to the elderly, are unfortunately are less likely to actively engage with the economy to many being retired and are not very likely to come up with innovative solutions, nor usually have the willingness to change and are often stubborn for good or ill. The majority of small cities are in some sort of decline as well, and if not, are stagnating. So small towns and cities are struggling, but why should anybody care? A significant urbanization is a process that has started ever since the Industrial Revolution and is unlikely to stop anytime soon. However, despite that, many small towns and cities I think should be reserved for future generations, if anything, at least as an alternative to the often over-congested and expensive big cities. Not to mention we'd all want to avoid a dystopian future, as seen in various cyberpunk fiction. The choices between mega cities or a bunch of small cities. Another reason is, albeit more subjective. Small towns and cities contain huge amounts of history and culture that often goes forgotten about when people do care to remember history. Take the town of Nanto, for instance, which has a history dating back to 1390 when the Zentoku-ji Buddhist temple was founded. And while most American towns, of course, can't compare to that length of time, each of them has its own unique history and cultural traditions, often deeply rooted with the frontier period and the later industrial period. The majority of American history 
isn't found in its big cities, but the smaller towns and cities that most ordinary Americans lived in during the early years of the country's development until after World War II, and more Americans officially lived in urban areas than in rural areas. So, how can they be revived? Well, the simplest answer is younger generations need to move back to their hometowns. Convincing them, of course, is a lot harder said than done. More complex strategies using existing assets to a better extent, of course, should be used, although that's not really relevant to the video. Though generally, small cities should look at what they have in terms of opportunities and seek to diversify so as not to be reliant on economic trends and that way are not hit as hard when the market crashes. These unique assets can really be anything if your town can convince people of it, be it people, culture, or local resources of the sort. Such as Soccer Quest shows a local plant called Kabur, a kind of turnip, or the woodcarving district which also exists within Nanta as Inami woodcarving town. Countless small towns have other assets such as beautiful natural scenery or traditional architecture dating in America to the Victorian age on average. However, what is available to a location is largely going to be a case-by-case -case basis and will depend more on the residents of the town to successfully use them, an idea not often considered in American circles but often the center of Japanese discussions is the broad use of media in tourism which Professor Yamura Takayoshi at Hokkaido University calls contents tourism, which for clarification and simplification, I will more broadly refer to as the use of culture and the promotion of small towns and cities, be it pop culture or traditional culture. This broadly covers that of anime, manga, games, architecture, mascots, and probably more which might help promote regions that are in decline. I'll take a closer look how they do so with anime first. One major achievement of anime Anime and help in the revival of small towns is a story of a district of Kanazawa Ishikawa Prefecture. Along with the anime Hanasaku Aroha, which itself is a slice of life character story. The Yuaku Onsen is a series of nine ends centered around a natural hot spring dating back centuries. In reaction to the anime, the end saw a 500% increase in guests compared to the slow decline previously. The spike is mainly notable as the area has seen a continuation of this, making it not just a quick fad with even a yearly festival being organized every year called the Bon Boy Festival, based on the one scene in the anime, with 15,000 guests in its 7th year, only being interrupted by that which shall not be named to please the YouTube algorithm. Another interesting case is the town of Washimiya within the Saitama Prefecture, and the anime Lucky Star, a slice of life anime that satirized otaku culture and used Washimiya as inspiration for its locations. The main reason why this case is interesting, I think, is because of its unique story following its errand to see a beneficial relationship between the company producing the anime, the fans, and the local town, which often see many issues in other cases from uncooperative companies with their copyright who hoard the use of their IP to intrusive fans who neglect the town the source is based on to towns that try to cheaply use the source material for a quick gain without understanding the original material. As such, what makes the case of Lucky Star noteworthy isn't that it brought a huge amount of success to the town, but that all parties involved managed to create an ideal beneficial relationship with such an approach likely required for any town to see financial gain with the use of cultural tourism in the long term. Less notable than anime, manga has helped as well, although to a much smaller degree, as many anime already overlap with manga, and due to the fact that obviously a lot of anime is based off of manga. Most of this is centered around though that is only involved with manga, is centered around the manga artists themselves, they have sometimes created manga related statues as, such as these Gigi no Kita statues, uh, semi-related to manga, a huge phenomenon really only seen in Japan exists called Yuru Kurawa mascots. Where these differ compared to western mascots, aside from the manga and anime influence, is the enormous frequency of mascots, with everything from towns, companies, stores, parts of cities, prefectures, often overlapping mascots for the same thing. And these mascots give additional brand recognition, or at least most probably seem to think so, as the mascot craze in Japan is not going anywhere anytime soon, and is so convoluted there have been several attempts by various local governments to reduce competing mascots. Not surprisingly, gaming, an industry comparable to the size of anime, gaming has in limited cases also helped promote smaller cities and towns. In particular, the Japanese games called Sengoku Bas 
Sora, an action game set during Japan's Sengoku Jidai period, or simply one state's period. The games apparently popularized a historical samurai named Katakuwa Kojura to widespread knowledge in Japan. This in turn boosted his hometown of Shiroshi City within Miyagi Prefecture, encouraging history motivated tourists to visit historical sites related to the character and game. Shiroshi City itself was a former castle town, as such, they proved to be rather suited to historical based tourism, which the release of the game and reaction of visiting tourists helped revive interest into the history of the town from the locals as well. Long story short, though, in reaction to the popularity of the games and later an anime adaptation as well, Shiroshi City, with the cooperation of the copyright holder, made several attempts to capitalize on the opportunity, such as the Oni Kojiro Matsura Festival. All this was done with careful attention to respect both the actual history and the game, which is probably rare considering how much Japanese tourism agencies prefer the fictional version of Ninja or more accurately Shinobi. Thus, though it started through promotion of a game, Shiroshi City has managed to revive historic interests in its historical sites both for locals and tourists. Another case is Tiger dramas, which for those who are not knowledgeable, are Japanese historical, not necessarily live action TV shows, which air for one year until the next one comes. Tiger dramas, while mostly unknown outside of Japan, do have a large domestic audience, which give a concentrated boost in tourism to prefecture struggling, often centered around local heroes or historical figures, such as the drama Yai no Sakura and the character of Nijima Yai, sometimes called the Bakumatsu Joan of Arc. However, as a whole, the use of tiger drama seems to be mostly temporary boost rather than long-term help, such as the case of the tiger drama Shensengumi, which failed to give the port of Hakodate any long-term benefit. Hakodate is a historically important port in Hokkaido and it was involved in the last samurai rebellion against the Meiji government. Japan over the last several decades has seen and made dozens of attempts to use the various forms of cultural tourism as Contents tourism, as we talked about, from anime, manga, games, dramas, and even mascots. Unfortunately, the cess cases are indeed rare or short lived, although, if a local town can navigate the complex relations between the source's fans and copyright holders, they can clearly greatly benefit themselves. Many more towns have tried other routes with mixed success as well, with even more fallen below the surface, unfortunately, becoming ghost towns. What lessons, if any, can be applied to the plight of American small towns and cities? For starters, the problem of their decline is clearly seen internationally, and the answers to said problems might also not be found solely in America. While American towns for the most part are not the location of Japanese specific media, the release of movies has also shown to promote tourism at least temporarily, such as the promotion of tourism related to the documentary Lord of the Rings and the fictional country of New Zealand. As such, a better usage of media that relate to local area might net a better return interest of tourism and commercial exports if utilized properly. Another major part of the Seth stories is the creation of local festivals, either utilizing existing history or creating new traditions which seamlessly fit into the local culture. Such an idea has already been tried to great success in many small cities and towns across America and is likely the best takeaway for American small cities and towns to copy. The issue of declining small cities and towns is likely unfortunately to remain a problem for the foreseeable future, but hopefully something made for entertainment can can give something back to the communities they're based off of. Of course, if you have anything to add, feel free to comment down below. I've been Anime Lore, and I produce content on anime, history, and anything else related to anime that I find interesting. If you liked the video, feel free to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Until next time.